and there weren't really all that many choices. But also one could argue that maybe at first glance there are these options, but when you truly come down to that one best choice that you can, um, that is offered to you, you don't really have that many choices. So a lot of these issues, I think you just need to go a bit deeper into and uh, to really get a sense of how hard life could be for people. And also a lot of people, the big cities at first in the last three years was race, so to speak, and then there are usually two routes. One is go back to, let's say, maybe my hometown is a, a smaller, a small town or a very small city or or um, however big the size or vibrant the local economy is. But some people say that maybe in that smaller pond um, actually requires more of the so-called guanxi or the personal connections. And that's one thing. I know Tinghu have something to share about that. So, so keep that thought, okay? And then, so, so there's that one scenario. And the other scenario is that some people, instead of going back to small hometowns or whatnot, um, they will go. That is like a regional economic hub. Maybe like 15 million people living there, and um, there are some opportunities there. And um, that's the kind of situation where, suppose you mentioned earlier, you have like this person with some qualifications and work experience and mega tiny cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and then they parachute there with these qualifications and uh, the boss kind of expect you to bring the so-called first tier city company experience and cache and you're expected to perform and sometimes they're paid really well but you're also under this pressure that if you don't live up to the expectation you could be out so so it's not so easy. And Ding Hong, yes, I know you have something to share here. <laughs> yeah, indeed, I really agree in both of these two points. And uh, overall, it's really difficult to generalize right here.